out towards me. I was skiing in Connecticut, messing around on some jumps. One wasn't really built that properly. I went off of it. I landed on my back. T12 L1 spinal cord injury. This suggested to us the possibility that we could actually use this nano-engineered material to initiate repair. The model that I chose to look at for a variety of personal and professional reasons is a model of spinal cord injury. Hey, sweetie. We're going out to lunch with them. I had always wanted to have a daughter. When my daughter was born, you know, it was sort of like that one thing in life that you feel like you don't have and suddenly somebody gives you the thing that you absolutely wanted the most. Okay. <laughs> so when she was growing up, I would constantly just tell her, you know, how much do I love you? And she knew the answer was more than anything else in the whole world. You know, that's how I felt about my daughter. It just, uh, uh, there, I guess there is sort of nothing in the world more important, which is why Which is why I don't like to talk about the accident. I was an expert in stem cells. I knew about growth factors. I knew about development of the nervous system. But this was a very individual problem. I really knew nothing about spinal cord injury except what I've read in passing. The day of the accident, I decided that's what I was going to do. Well, it's exciting to finally get it set up, isn't it? Yep. I changed the whole focus of where my research was going. Developed an approach that would allow us to utilize stem cells for treating spinal cord injury. You can see the injury site, right. and then you can see there's this glial scar forming above and below. After doing that, um, I really got absolutely no staining at all. Here's the gray matter, you can't really see it. Should More like go to California again? I don't know that that will, I don't know that that will help. Are they not doing mice? They do mice, they do mostly rats. At this point, I don't see that that would help, it's, but we can talk about it. It's just that we don't want this to be a stumbling block in acquiring the last piece of data we need for the paper, you know? No, I'm with you. As a stem cell biologist, I find it appalling that short-sighted and politically motivated federal policies have impeded stem cell research. As a father, I am both outraged and heartbroken that politics and irrational fears of new technologies are depriving my daughter Allison of the possibility of walking again. This becomes an obsession. It becomes the driving force in life. There is no clinical dissociation from this. This is a very personal issue now. What do you see when you see the story? You see my dad, who's a well-renowned scientist, and then you have me. They always use me as like, oh, poor little girl, and look what her dad's trying to do for her. And like, and I think it's crap. I mean, I'm a 19 year old woman who goes to Harvard and who has a lot to offer and wants to do a lot of things. And they try and make me seem like daddy's little girl. And like, I am, but at the same time, I'm, you know, grown up. And my daughter gets mad at me. You know, get over it, dad. Come on, you know, that's, that's done. Get over it. She's right. And, but it's, there's just this dagger, it doesn't go away.